Okay, going to start from page 23 now. Maxwell's equations. Maxwell's equations are mathematically rather more complicated, but in essence, rather more complicated than Pythagoras' theorem, I think. Rather more complicated, but in essence, yes, it is. They do exactly the same kind of job. They can, for example, tell you in which direction a compass needle will be deflected if you send a pulse of current, a pulse of electric current through a wire without having to look at the compass. The wonderful thing about equations, however, is that they can also reveal deep connections between quantities that are not immediately apparent from the results of the experiments, and in doing so can lead to a much deeper and more profound understanding of nature. This turns out to be emphatically true of Maxwell's equations. Central to Maxwell's mathematical description of electrical and magnetic phenomena are the abstract electric and magnetic fields Faraday first pictured. Maxwell wrote down his equations in the language of fields because he had no choice. It was the only way of bringing together the vast range of electric and magnetic, magnetic phenomena observed by Faraday and his colleagues into a single unified set of equations. Just as Pythagoras' equation expresses a relationship between the length of the side of a triangle, Maxwell's equations express relationships between electric charges and currents and the electric and magnetic fields they create. Maxwell's genius was to invite the fields to emerge from the shadows and take a centre stage. If, for example, and take centre stage, if, for example, you ask Maxwell why a battery causes a current to flow in a wire, he might say, because a battery causes there to be an electric field in the wire and the field makes the current flow. Or, if you asked him why a compass needle deflects near a magnet, he might say, because there is a magnetic field around the magnet and this causes the compass needle to move. If you asked him why a moving magnet causes a current to flow inside a coiled wire, he might answer that there is a changing magnetic field inside the coiled wire that causes an electric field to appear in the wire and this electric field causes a current to flow. In each of these very different phenomena, the description always comes back to the presence of electric and magnetic fields and the interaction of the fields with each other. Achieving a simpler and more satisfying view of many diverse and at first unrelated phenomena through the introduction of a new unifying concept is a common occurrence in physics. Indeed, it could be seen as a reason for the success of science as a whole. In Maxwell's case, it led to a simple and unified picture of all observed electric and magnetic phenomena that worked beautifully, in the sense that it allowed for the outcome of any and all of the pioneering benchtop experiments of Faraday and his colleagues to be predicted and understood. This was a remarkable achievement in itself, but somehow even more remarkable happened during the process of deriving the correct equations. Maxwell was forced to add an extra piece into his equations that was not mandated by the experiments. From Maxwell's point of view, it was necessary purely to make his, his equations mathematically consistent. Contained in this last sentence is one of the deepest and in some ways most mysterious insights into the workings of modern science. Physical objects out there in the real world behave in predictable ways using little more than the same basic laws of mathematics that Pythagoras probably knew about when he set about to calculate the properties of triangles. This is an empirical fact and can in no way and no sense be said to be obvious. In 1960, the Nobel Prize winning theoretical physicist Eugene Wigner wrote a famous essay titled The Unreasonable Effectiveness of Mathematics in the Natural Sciences, in which he stated that it is not at all natural that laws of nature exist, much less that man is able to discover them. Our experience teaches us that there are indeed laws of nature, regularities in the way things behave, and these laws are best expressed using the language of mathematics. This raises the interesting possibility that mathematical consistency might be used to guide us, 
along with experimental observation, to the laws that describe physical reality. And this has proved to be the case time and again throughout the history of science. We will see this happen during the course of this book, and it is truly one of the wonderful mysteries of our universe that it should be so. Okay, see you next time.